Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Casey, come. Read the scripture. Greet the folks. Pray over this service tonight as we get started. Turn to your neighbor. I come to have church tonight. Hallelujah. Come to have church tonight. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Lord. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The, mat, the scripture I'd like to read for tonight is Matthew 4, 16, where it says, The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, the light is sprung up. Amen? Jesus Christ is that light. He is the light that casts out and dispels all darkness. Amen? He is here to heal you, to deliver you, to set the captives free. That is his word, that is his promise. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, the wonderful name of Jesus. We bless and praise your holy and mighty name, O God. We ask, O Lord, that you would visit us this night, Father God. We pray for your glory, Father. We pray for your deliverances. We ask that you would walk among these aisles this night to touch, to heal, to restore, to set the captives free, for you are that light. You are that deliverer, Father God, that sets the captives free, Father. And I ask, O Lord, that this night that you would walk among us, O God, and set the captives free, Father. Let us see your glory and your power and your magnificence, O God. We bless you and praise you In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen and amen. We're going to sing getting ready to leave this world. I was thinking here in just a few days, we're getting ready to, Lord willing, head up to convocation. If you come in our house probably Saturday evening, you'll find a suitcase sitting on the desk. On the, on the table there, my wife will be getting it all, starting to put all this, because she's preparing to go somewhere. I, I, I was thinking on this today. I thought, I, I wonder if the Lord checked into our house today. Would it look like we're getting ready to leave, or does it look like we're getting ready to stay? <laughs> Let's be ready to leave. Amen. Getting ready to leave this world. Well, I'm laying up my treasures in that home above. Oh, I'm trusting, fully trusting in the Savior's love. Well, I'm doing what I can for heaven's holy dove. Cause I'm getting ready to leave this world. I said I'm getting ready to leave this world. saving grace in each earthly trial I is love can trace sure that up in heaven I shall find a place cause I'm ready ready gonna leave this world getting ready to leave this world oh I'm getting ready for those days of world well I'm getting in my record right watching both 
world's not my home. We're just a traveling through. Amen. This world is not my home. Well, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Well, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't go at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what can I do? Well, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door. Treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Well, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If it's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? Well, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door. here no more. <laughs> it's not, this ain't home. <laughs> if, it, if it keeps changing, it just seems less and less like home. I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. Well, here among the shadows in a lonely land with strangers were abandoned. Pilgrims on the blue through danger turning down with sorrows and we're shunned on every hand. We are looking for a Oh, we are looking for a city. I said, where we'll never die. Oh, up there, the Saint Amelia. Well, they never say goodbye. Oh, and there. 
greet our Savior. Oh, and our loved ones too. Won't you come, oh, Holy Spirit? All our hopes renewed. Well, here at Disappeared Winds, we so sadly roam and earthly friends no longer speak one word of love. But truly we have found the divine Jesus promised us a home. We are looking for a city built above. Oh yes, I'm looking for a city. I did where we'll never die. Oh, up there, the saint a million. Well, they never say goodbye. Oh, and they Simply trusting in the blessed Savior's love and mercy. Though we may be strangers in this world again, we're always looking for a city built above. Oh, yes, we're looking for a city. I did where we'll never die. Oh, up there. Lift our hands and worship the Lord here tonight. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord, for the blessed hope and promise that we have. God, that you're coming back soon and very soon. God, help us, Lord, to be ready, looking forward to your return. Praise the Lord. Can we give him a hand clap of praise here tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He's worthy. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. Man, I was thinking there's coming a day. When that eastern sky is going to split and Jesus is going to call us home and our faith is going to be made sight. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to that day. I mean, it's going to be a change, amen, in the way that we're, we're, we're our relationship with Christ works. And I was thinking that time when he died on the cross, there was a moment there where previously it was just the priest that could go in. It was just the priest that could go into that place where the presence of God dwelled and where the Ark of the Covenant was. But, but when Jesus died on the cross, all of a sudden that veil was torn and, and there was an availability for us to have a, a different relationship, a personal relationship to bring our needs directly to Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so tonight we're going to get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, this is not... This is not just uh, I'm making a request known to a priest. It's not making a request known to some man or somebody that's limited in ability. But this is making our request known to a God that is well able to do above and beyond what we could ask or think. That's not limited in any way, shape, or form. He's the Savior, the Healer, the Redeemer, the Restorer. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so tonight I just challenge you as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. I want us to, as we even give our request... I want us to do it in faith, amen, that God is going to move and that God's going to speak, amen. Praise the Lord, you've got a need here on my right hand, amen, my right hand side tonight. You've got a need you want to make known before the Lord and the church. All right, amen, let's pray for this tonight. Yes, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thankful that prayers have been answered. Amen. Yes, Sister Sprayberry. Yes. Yes. Hmm. 
Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Power and prayer. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, glory to God. Amen. Amen. God's good to us. Amen. He's coming back. Praise the Lord. Peggy Gray, let's remember Sister Peggy Gray tonight. Amen. Yes, yes Sister. Your neighbor. Amen. Absolutely. Yes, Sister Martin. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Let's pray for Matthew tonight. Amen. Yes, Sister Ryan. Let's remember this, brother, tonight, amen, that God would move and touch. Yes, Brother Casey. Amen. Salvation for lost loved ones. If anybody else got lost loved ones, man, we need the Lord to bring conviction, save them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else here on my right-hand side? Amen. Anybody on my left here tonight? Yes, Sister Brown. Let's pray for this friend's family tonight. Amen. Brother Baker. All right. Let's remember this sister-in-law. Yes, sister. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Man, thank for that. Let's remember Sister Tana tonight. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, Kenny. All right, let's remember this friend tonight. Amen. Yes, Sister White. All right, let's remember these needs tonight. Amen. Anybody else have a special unspoken request? Amen. The Lord sees and He knows He's able. Amen. Anybody else tonight, you've got a need. Yes, brother. Pray for Israel. Yes, let's remember Israel tonight. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. God would bring peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Man, can we stand tonight? Man, there's been a few things in my life that I've done that I wasn't too confident whenever I got ready to do it. I'll just be honest with you. I get nervous every time the song leader walks away a little bit early. Because I know I'm not the greatest singer out there. But I tell you what, whenever I go to the Lord in prayer, I've got a confidence. Amen. And so tonight, let's lift these knees up to the Lord in prayer. We've heard testimonies tonight. So let's trust that He's able. God of heaven, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you're well able to do above and beyond what we could ask or thank God. You said to bring our needs unto you, that you're concerned with where we're at. God, I pray that tonight you would begin to move and to speak and to minister, God. Lord, we pray for the peace of Israel. God of heaven, Lord, that you would protect them, that you would be with them. God of heaven, Lord, that you would bring peace in victory to them. God, I pray for Matthew tonight that you would give the doctors wisdom. God, that you would bring healing to his body. God of heaven, Lord, these needs tonight are many and these requests are great, but we know that you are greater still. God, there's nothing that's too hard, Lord, nothing that's too big for you. I pray, God, for every lost loved one tonight. Let the convicting power of the Holy Ghost begin to grip their hearts, God, and help us, Lord, to recognize that you're in control of all things. God of heaven, we bring these needs to you in faith and confidence tonight, God of heaven. And we leave them at the foot of the throne knowing that you are faithful, God. Lord, we love you. We thank you tonight that you're as close as the mention of your name. And we trust you, God of heaven, Lord, to complete the work which you've begun. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. You can be seated tonight. The ushers want to go ahead and make their way this way. And man, turn and tell your neighbor, it's good to see you tonight. Good to see you tonight, Brother Lane. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got fifth Sunday coming up this Sunday. 
Man, anybody excited for Fifth Sunday? Man, anybody excited for Fifth Sunday? Lord of God, looking forward to it. It's going to be a wonderful time. Always is. Good food. But I tell you what, what would make it even better is if you were there and you brought somebody with you. Amen. Man, praise the Lord. Be a great opportunity to invite somebody. I've been hearing a lot here lately about how the Lord's coming back soon. And I tell you what, what greater opportunity to invite somebody to the Lord's house. Amen. Than this fifth Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm uh, going to receive the tithes and offering. Encourage you to give as unto the Lord. God, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness. Thank you, God, for this congregation, their heart for you, their willingness, God, to come into your house and lift up your name. I pray tonight that you'd bless both the gift and the giver. Minister in the remainder of this service. We love you, Lord. Amen. Lord, um, I was thinking today, you know, if you look at the news or if you get on Facebook or really anywhere, um, there's a lot of things happening in our world that make it seem shaky. You know, there's a lot of unknown, there's a lot of changes, um, and there's a lot of questions. But no matter what is happening, no matter what changes, no matter what shifts, there are still truths that we can stand on. And the Lord is still faithful. His promise is still sure, and I'm so thankful for that.
the grave is empty, the stone is still round. You're still high and lifted up. You're still seated on your throne. The cross still stands. The blood still flows. still empty, the stone is still round. You're still high and lifted up, you're still seated on your throne. The cross still stands, your blood still flows. The work is finished and hell still knows that the grave is empty, the stone is still Lift your hands and give him praise tonight. Father, we praise you. Thank you, Lord, that you're in control. We magnify you, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we'll praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Oh, give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each day oh yes I will praise him oh I will praise him I will praise the lamb for sinners slain oh give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each stain. Oh, right now I will praise him. I will praise him. The Lamb for sinners slain. Oh, give Him glory, all ye people. For His blood can wash away each day. Oh, glory, glory to the 
Teach me, Lord, to wait. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. While you're standing, turn with me in your Bible tonight to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter 18. Book of Genesis chapter 18. Abraham had some heavenly visitors. My prayer tonight is is that God would pass by this way on a Wednesday night and visit with us. Hallelujah. I believe that he is here. I said, I believe that he is here. Let me rephrase that. I know that he is here. If we are not careful, we can come into the house of the Lord and leave the same way that we came, taking it for granted the privilege that we have of being in the house of God, in the presence of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 1, And the Lord appeared unto him, talking about Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door, in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, bowed himself toward the ground, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, Pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good. He didn't give them the old Boss said, oh, he found a young tender calf and gave it unto a young man, and he haste to dress it, and he took butter, oh, come on, somebody, and milk, and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat fellowship together, a divine visitation, a divine visitation. Lord, I pray tonight that you would give us in this house a divine visit from above. Father, we thank you for your presence that we sense here tonight. I thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl that is gathered here tonight. I thank you that we have the privilege of being in your house. I thank you for the freedom that we have in America to boldly come together and proclaim your word and to lift our hands to call upon you and to worship you. I thank you for that. I pray that we never take it for granted. I pray, Lord, that you would sweep across this place tonight, Lord, minister and strengthen, encourage the body of Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to that one that is weary, that one that is in the heat of the battle. I pray for that one that has questions and don't know which way to turn and what to do. Lord, that you would show up in this place. Call them by name. 
Minister and move to every individual for the glory of God. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you as you're seated. A divine visitation. A divine visitation. Every once in a while, I will be as my grandsons are excited, counting down the days when Papa is going to show up on Monday. They're excited. There's somebody else that's been excited, and Mom has to wait to tell him because he'll get excited wanting to know and count down the hours. Many times he would be standing at the door. If he knew I was leaving late at night, I'd showed up before at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. He'd be checking with me. He'd call about every hour. How's it going? Are you to Durant yet? Are you to Muskogee? Have you made it through McAllister? Be careful in McAllister. One time he was leaving here and driving through McAllister. He had a great uncle. Was driving through McAllister, Oklahoma. Quincy Snow was driving through there. 18-wheeler, run a red light, run clean over the top of their car. Was smashed down about knee high. Killed my great uncle and aunt. Mom and dad was driving through there. Lady pulled out in front of them, T-boned them, hit them broadside. So every time I mention McAllister, immediately in their mind, they go back to that. They was leaving, headed back home. So he stays up in the six hours that I'm driving. He's praying that God would keep his hand upon his son while he's driving. He'd be standing in the door, 4 o'clock in the morning, when them lights would turn the corner and shine across the living room, he'd spring up out of old brownie. That's his recliner. Spring up out of old brownie. Come to the door and swing it open. Four o'clock, didn't matter what time it was because he was anxious for a visit from his son. I would to God tonight that we would not become so commonplace that we have forgotten what it's like when the Son of the living God shows up to have fellowship with us, that we would be excited to be in the house of the Lord again. Oh, I'm telling you, friend, there's nothing greater than being in the house of God and sitting down and having fellowship with the Son of the living God. I'd rather be in the presence of God and be in His house. I love being in the house of God. I love having fellowship. Yes, he goes with me. Yes, he rides with me in my pick em up truck. Yes, we have great fellowship in the office. But there's something great about being with people of like precious faith who have the same desire. I'm telling you, there's one thing I missed and really stirred my heart in the middle of all that COVID we went through a few years ago, just a few days ago now, and we ought to remember what it was like when we're sitting at home, folks in their pajamas on a Sunday morning trying to listen to a service that had been pre-recorded. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here. And what it was that first Sunday, we was able to come back and sit down in the house of God and be together. I still thank God for a governor that I talked to personally on the phone that said the first thing I'm going to open up I'm going to open up the house of God because it's the most important house in the state of Texas. You hear me right now? The most important house, the most important house is not the White House. It's a church house. Y'all ain't going to help me preach on a Wednesday night. I'm glad when the divine presence of God sweeps across and ministers to the people in the house of God. And the Bible tells us here that Abraham... Abraham had a great time in his life. In chapter 18, see, God had showed up. God had given him some promises, and they hadn't come true yet. Is anybody in here, God has told you some things he's going to do, but it hadn't come to pass yet. You've been praying for some children to be saved, but you hadn't seen them saved yet. You've been praying for a healing, and it seems like instead of getting better, it's gotten worse. I got good news for you. God ain't through yet. I said, God ain't through yet. 
And delay is not denial. I said delay is not denial. God's still on the throne. He knows the beginning from the end. And he's still in charge. And Abraham here, here he is. Oh, the first thing that jumped all over me is that the sovereign would want to show up and visit with his subjects. I mean, think about it. Oh, hallelujah. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I've known them for a good while, and that we've been friends for a good while. But I realized in just a short time, they, was, they were so tickled and thankful that I'd come by just to sit down with them and have some fellowship together. Hallelujah. I said, man, I'm nobody. I'm nothing. They said, oh, but you don't know what it means that you just take the time. I know you got a lot of things going you, but you would come by here, drive out of your way, all the way out here, just to sit down and have fellowship with us. I want you to think about it just for a moment that the God of heaven, the creator of the universe, he who spoke the worlds into existence on a Wednesday night would show up ah, at 1101 Audra just to have fellowship with you. Hey, just to call you by name. Just to pull you up to the table, Blake, and let you know that he knows right where you're at and right what you're going through is in the middle of the heat of the battle. It was in the middle of the heat of the day. Abraham is sitting in there that God, hallelujah, the sovereign, would want to show up and have fellowship with his subjects. I'm reminded of the old story of the queen, Queen Elizabeth, years ago. They said that she would just ride through and she would listen and talk to different individuals about individuals in the, in the little villages that, that she was reigning over. And they was telling her about a dear elder widow woman and how much she loved God and how helpful she was in the community, Sister Ferguson, and how much she prayed and how she helped to feed and how she, even though she was a widow, she continued to show the love of God in her village and in her neighborhood. Queen Elizabeth said, I want to show up and surprise her and have tea with her at her house. Queen Elizabeth, they said the royal carriage pulled up. She got out, went inside, sat down with her. All of a sudden, everybody in the neighborhood realized who it was. They gathered around, and they waited till she got through. She went in there. The queen talked to her, had tea with her. About 40 minutes later, got up and left that little humble abode, went out and got in her carriage, and they rode off. They immediately gathered around the dear mama, and they began to ask her. And somebody, a local reporter, asked her, said, well, of all the people you've had, said, this has got to be the greatest, this has got to be the greatest, visitor you've ever had. She said, no, well, uh, I, I guess it is. Somebody spoke up and said, yeah, but you've been telling us all about Jesus and how great he is. She looked at him and said, well, you fool. Said, Jesus ain't no visitor here. He lives here. He's here all the time. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, friend, that God would show up in a divine visitation for you and for me, but he wants to go home with you. He wants to be with you. Hallelujah. He wants to ride in your car on the way home. He wants to kick fear and doubt out of the car. He wants to kick the sin and the old bad habit. You say, hey, I'm always going to be that way. No, sir. When Jesus moves in, friend, he will make a difference in your life. And here he is under the oak. God's men never did well sitting under oak trees. Y'all ain't going to help me. 1 Kings chapter 13, the old prophet shows up to Jeroboam and he's on his way home. God said, go in there, tell him, turn around, get out. But on the way home, he decides to sit down under an oak tree. Yeah, another prophet comes by says, you need to come home with me. I said, God's men never does good sitting down. 
Jonah, sitting under an old gourd, trying to find him some shade. Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, brother, you need to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You need to go back and reread that. Moses is the one that stopped. Moses is the one that stood still. Are y'all still with me? God said, what are you doing standing here? Stretch forth your rod and G-O, go. It's not time to stop and sit down. I said, God's men never done good under the shade trees. Elijah sitting under a juniper tree. Here is Abraham. He's sitting in the tent. What is the tent? You and I, you and I have this treasure in earthen vessels. What is this tabernacle? We have a tabernacle that's not made with hands. We have a fleshly tabernacle. What is a tent? A tent is not a permanent dwelling place, Kaylee. The tent is is a temporary. The tent is a temporary dwelling place. It is that which moves from one location to another. You and I, this is just a temporary dwelling place. Here he is. He's in the tent of human reasoning. He's trying to figure it out. He's trying to work it all out. He's trying to figure out God's promises in the tent of himself and his own mind. But God, hallelujah, I said, but God shows up in the middle of his doubt. God shows up in the middle of him wondering how it's going to work out, how God is going to do what he said he was going to do. And when he shows up in the tent of humanity, in his human reason, Hallelujah. Sarah begins to laugh at the promises of God. But Abraham, the Bible said, began to believe. He believed. He counted it to God for righteousness. He was a friend of God. Listen to me, friend. I come to tell somebody, my, 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 my. I come to tell somebody on a Wednesday night, God's promises are yea and amen to them that believe. And when the end enemy comes against you you stand on what thus saith the Lord never ever doubt in the darkness what God has spoken to you in the light of his word friend we shall overcome we're on the winning side here we are divine presence of God shows up And what does he do? He invades the tabernacle. When God shows up, y'all, some of you are still thinking about your bills right now. I'm trying to get your attention, right? You're still worried about the problem right now while I'm preaching to you. Where's the Lord at? What are we going to do? Oh, no. Oh, no. All of a sudden, God shows up. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost show up. Three of them from heaven show up. Hallelujah. Somebody said when we get to heaven, we're going to be vegan. I don't think so by that text. They show up. I'm not here to argue with you over that. They show up, and what happens? Instead of sitting in his tent, 
instead of his mind so wrapped up in his problem, instead of him being so wrapped up on his doubt, can I go ahead and preach to you? Instead of him being so beat up over his mistake with Ishmael, instead of him, y'all ain't gonna help me preach, instead of him sitting there wrestling with all of it, friend, the Bible said that he perceived, he saw, he saw, I pray tonight that God would open somebody's eyes on a Wednesday night uh, that you would see that the presence of God uh, is passing by your way uh, and you don't have to leave the same way that you came uh, for the presence of the Lord is in this house on a Wednesday night. He saw them and got up and moved toward them. Well, if the Lord wants to help me, he'll just come back here and knock me over. When he sensed, he got up and he began to move toward them and gave invitation. Somebody say invitation. Come into my house. Come over here. Young person, how long are you going to go going through the motion? Young parents, how long are you going to go just going through the motion? Listen to me, Daddy. It's time that you recognize when the presence of the Lord. Come here. I'm running towards you. I, I need you to come. I need you to go home with me. I got I to gotta have some things different than what. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He perceived and he gave invitation. He recognized his guest. There's many ways that God visits us today. He visits us through his people. He visits us through a message. He visits us through a song. He visits us through the word. He visits us through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And when, when Abraham recognized, he invited them in and he began to wait on them. I said he began to wait on them. He began, oh, you don't go kill a calf and have a steak in five minutes. You don't go back there and say, okay, Sarah, I need you to make some cake. She grabs the meal. She gets the milk. She begins to work it together. She begins to, and all of a sudden, building the fire, putting it, oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Friend, it's going to take a little bit of time. There's going to be preparation. You're going to have, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But in the middle of that waiting process, there's a different kind of waiting now hallelujah when I still don't have the answer I continue to wait stay here Lord stay right here with me I'm going to serve you how can I do what do I need to do Lord don't you leave here hallelujah I want your divine presence to go with me hallelujah God's initiative when we open up Provide a place for him. You know what happened? God says, look. Look here, Abraham. I'm going to complete my promise. Hello. And he comes back and says, can I withhold any good thing from Abraham? He begins to tell him about what's going to happen to his family, Lot. You know why Lot was spared? Because Abraham, because Abraham had a divine visitation.
Listen to me, friend. I need a divine visit from the Lord. This may not be for everybody, but if I know anything, I know it's for somebody in this house tonight. And can I tell you that it's your move. It's your move. I said it's your move. I got a few more things I wrote down. I want the musicians to come right now. I feel like telling somebody it's your move right now. It's your move. It's your move. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in here. See, Abraham had doubts. Have you ever sat in a tent? I have I've helped done many a funeral in Texas. You show up and they have that tent. You step under that tent, it's about 20 degrees hotter. What did God tell Abraham? He said, I'm going to make your seed as the stars in the sky. Kind of hard to see the stars when you're sitting in the tent. I'm going to make your seed. I'm going to I'm going to get like the sand. Oh, it's hard to see the sand. I don't know, Lord. I'm trying to figure this thing out. I I don't know how you're going to do it. It's not up to me to figure it out. Get out, Abraham. Start walking. Every place the sole of your foot shall trod. I'm going to give that to you. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. Oh, you ain't going to make it. I'm telling you, the devil will lie to you all the way through. You're no good. You ain't. I'm telling you, the devil's a liar and a defeated foe. I come to tell somebody on a Wednesday night that God has come by here with a divine visitation. But you got to get up from where you're at and move toward him and say, Lord, oh, Lord, I need you to come into my house. I need you, and I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. Stand with me all over this house. You need the Lord. You need a divine visitation tonight. Don't wait on anybody else. Right now, come and lift your hands toward heaven. Say, Lord, hallelujah. 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 I'm waiting on you, Lord. I'm hungry for a divine visitation. I'm hungry for a divine visitation. Hallelujah, it's your move. Draw nigh to God and He'll draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God and He'll draw nigh to you. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'm hungry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here I am. Here I 
am. You see me. You know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. You are calling. Yeah. That's right, son. That's right, brother. Hallelujah. 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 You are drawing. You 